Welcome to stage 4 of the Mirage GT build video series. In this video, we're going to be conducting our interior pre-fit. This includes fitting our tunnel and gearbox cover, interior light panel, rear quarter panels, dashboard and radio box, and our top side panels, screen pillars and boot panels. As usual, a full list of the torque settings for this video can be found on our website using the link in the description below. With all of our Stage 3 components now fitted, we're now ready to conduct our interior prefit. We're going to start by attaching four brackets to the rollover bar panel. We're going to position the longer edge of each bracket facing upwards against the roof of the body. In order to aid the bonding process, we've gone ahead and roughened the surface of the rollover bar panel and cleaned it thoroughly with cellulose thinners in preparation for fitting these four brackets. We're going to start by adding a small amount of bonding adhesive to each bracket before moving them into position squarely against the rollover bar panel and body. We can now add a strip of masking tape to temporarily hold these brackets in place. This process can now be repeated for the three remaining brackets on our rollover bar panel. With all of our brackets now fitted, we're now going to fit our tunnel and gearbox cover. Before we fit our tunnel, we're going to add two strips of masking tape onto our chassis and mark the vertical position of the chassis bolt holes at this point. We can now move the tunnel into position over the handbrake and mark the position of the base of our tunnel onto the masking tape. Once complete, we can now remove the tunnel and measure the distance between the position of the base of the tunnel and the center of the bolt holes of our chassis. These measurements can now also be marked on both sides of the tunnel. It's advisable at this stage to drill two small pilot holes in these marked positions on our tunnel before temporarily moving the tunnel back into position on the chassis in order to check that each of these pilot holes have been accurately measured. These pilot holes will be enlarged and used to secure our seatbelt buckles at a later stage of our build. With our pilot holes now successfully drilled, we can now once again move the tunnel back into its final position on our chassis and begin to secure it in place. We're going to drill four additional holes through each corner of our tunnel and into the chassis and secure the tunnel in place using four of the self-tapping screws provided. We can now also move our gearbox cover into position and repeat this process with four additional self-tapping screws. The final two self-tapping screws will be used to secure the tunnel and gearbox cover together, like so. Moving back to our rollover bar panel now, and with our four brackets now set and bonded, we can now fit our interior light panel. We start by moving the interior light panel into position and drilling four holes through the panel and into each of our four brackets. 
before temporarily securing the panel in place using four of the self-tapping screws provided. Once in place, we can now roughly mark the position of the interior light panel horizontally against the rollover bar mounting panel. With its position marked, we can now remove the interior light panel and trim our rollover bar panel against this newly marked horizontal line, like so. These parts will be sanded and straightened during the paint and trimming stage of our build. With the rollover bar panel now successfully trimmed, we can now once again reattach the interior light panel. We're now ready to fit the rear quarter panels. Whilst these panels come pre-trimmed, it may be necessary to make several small adjustments to the panel in order to obtain its most optimum fit. We need to ensure that our panels are positioned with a minimum 10mm gap along its edges, which will allow for us to fit our seal at a later stage of this build. Once we are happy with the positioning of our rear quarter panels, we can now drill through the panel and into the chassis, and secure the panel in place with the self-tapping screws provided, like so. With our rear quarter panel now secure, we can now repeat this process for the second of our two rear quarter panels. We're now ready to fit the dashboard. For the purpose of filming this step, we've temporarily removed both of the side doors in order to allow us better access to our dashboard during its installation. We start by feeding the dashboard into position and temporarily securing it in place using two clamps. We can now fine tune its positioning by readjusting the clamps until the dashboard is sitting evenly with a 10 to 15 mil clearance between the top of the dashboard and the body. This 10 to 15 mil clearance will allow space for the windscreen seal which will be fitted at a later stage of our build. With our dashboard now sitting neatly in position, we're going to drill two bolt holes on each side of our dashboard and temporarily secure it in place with the bolts and washers provided. During final installation, countersunk bolts and small spacers will be used to ease the installation of the door aperture seals. Be sure to secure these bolts loosely for now, as we may need to remove our dashboard several times during the remainder of our build. With the dashboard now secure on both sides, we can now fit our dashboard support. We start by attaching a strip of masking tape to our bulkhead, before moving the dashboard support into position against the underside of the dashboard. Be sure to once again check the 10 to 50 mil clearance of the top of the dashboard here, before marking the position of the dashboard support onto the masking tape. Once again, we may need to temporarily remove the dashboard at this stage in order to drill these two bolts into our chassis, before securing the dashboard support in place with the bolts and washers provided.
We're now ready to fit the radio box. We need to ensure that the top lip of the radio box is fed into position onto the underside of the bottom of our dashboard. Once level and in a central position, we can now secure the radio box to the dashboard using four of the self-tapping screws provided. Next up are our two top side panels and screen pillars. We're going to use two self-tapping screws to attach each of our side panels to our brackets. We can now attach our two screen pillars by drilling two holes through each panel and into the brackets before once again securing these panels in place using the self-tapping screws provided. For the final stage of our interior prefit, we're going to fit our boot panels. The top boot panels will be fixed to the bars of our chassis using a pair of self-tapping screws. The bottom boot panels will be fully secured in place at a later stage of our build so we're going to secure these temporarily in place for now using a single self-tapping screw at the center of each panel. This concludes the interior prefit of our build. And with our kit now fully assembled, it will now be sent away for painting and trimming before we are ready to move on to the next stage.